Okay, good morning, um, everyone, or good afternoon, or perhaps it's good evening for some of you. Uh, we are tuning in live uh, from London. Um, it's 10 a.m. Um, here in London. Um, the weather is not great, so I don't feel sorry for being here online welcoming you all. Um, and we are about to kick off our fifth AI Accelerator. So we have been running this program every year. And this is the fifth time we're doing this, and it's going to happen online uh, for everyone. So uh, we've had um, over 300 young people apply this year. It has been hugely popular. Um, over 77% of applications were from young women. 73% uh, were from um, Afro-Black Caribbean backgrounds. 43% um, are from Africa. So it's a very, very diverse uh, cohort um, this year, only 40 of them are able to participate in this very unique flagship uh, program and they will have a chance to work for the next two weeks with um, young people, uh, with mentors from um, MasterCard, from Microsoft, from various other incredible companies like Quantum Black and they will be, of course, tackling United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. So here with us today, uh, Nitendra, um, head of uh, AI Garage, MasterCard India. So Nitendra, welcome. And thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Elena. I'm too excited to be here. Thank you. And uh, we're so happy you're joining us today uh, to deliver our opening keynote. Um, and following this, we will have four more speakers to present their challenges, but Nitendra, I'm so glad you're with us. Um, and this is a unique opportunity to address not only the young people who will participate in this cohort, uh, but also young people from across the globe who will be tuning in uh, either live or after this uh, live stream to really hear what you have to say um, as somebody from MasterCard, somebody who joined um, MasterCard probably very young as well. And, um, you know, they're all exploring AI, they're all exploring technologies, and um, it's only two weeks that they have to solve um, a real problem in the AI for good or AI for impact space. So it's over to you. Thank you so much once again, Elisa. And thanks a lot actually for you and everyone who's behind this interesting program on teens in AI. And uh, MasterCard is obviously very happy to support in many different ways. So as Elisa, you mentioned, there will be a few people who you know, you will reach out to you. You'll keep bouncing on and off with them. Um, and there is a reason why MasterCard is doing that. It's investing in this program from a people's perspective because um, you are the future in some sense and you are the future of the industry. And if you are well informed, if you make the best choices, then businesses like ours and many others will benefit from it. And then why is it important for us to actually be informed and that too about artificial intelligence? Maybe one of the reasons why some of you are here is that um, you hear a lot about it in the news, right? It's a hot thing to talk about. Um, but there is much more to this AI than what we see or hear. And the truth is that this is one technology which is actually touching all different aspects of this whole human society. And that is one thing that really excites me the most about artificial intelligence. Just think about it um, in terms of whatever you would have seen as technology components that you've been exposed to so far. Let's talk about a computer. Let's talk about um, um, what else are the technology. So let's say electricity. Let's talk about um, or things that go in the space and so on and so forth. If you think about each one of these individual components, who develop those kind of things? So usually if it's about a computer, there are people who are engineers, scientists who worked, who know the hardware structure of a machine and so on and so forth. And they build these best devices, right? Um, who are the people who go out on space, the astronauts and maybe the technical team behind them who builds all these machines which could go out in space and so on, right? 
Now think back and look into what AI is doing and who is involved behind that. And that will help you realize the potential and the vastness of this technology. So how are you exposed to AI? Maybe um, simple things like Siri, you talk to it and it understands, right? Alexa and so on and so forth. When you go on to a e-commerce website or when you go on for a Netflix type of a movie on that platform, it already knows what you've seen earlier and then it understands your choices and it can give you something that you would like in the future and so on, right? But this is just like the surface. The technology goes very, very deep in here. <clears throat> and I would want you to actually now think about it, how AI is actually starting to work. AI is called AI, why? Artificial intelligence. And for us, before we go to artificial intelligence, we need to understand what is intelligence. Now, what is intelligence? It actually is the way our brain works. If we understand how our brain works, we can replicate it into machines. And when machines start working the way our brain works, since those machines are artificial, it is called as artificial intelligence, right? So the first step, how does our brain work? Artificial intelligence is actually taking us back to understand more about our own brain. And the people who actually are behind it are people from the biology background, neuroscientists, right? Who understand how the neurons and so on in our brain work. And they replic they kind of explain how what different parts of our brain work. So there is now this understanding, I mean, it's been there for a while, but there's a specific part in the brain, which is called as That's a silent. Wernicke uh, area. Send you a, a, a picture of the. I'm so sorry about that. Um, so um, the way our brain works is that there is a specific area in the brain called as a. We Wernicke. cut it. Oh my goodness, this is not nice. Okay, this should have been the last one. So uh, the way our brain works is that uh, we have an area called Wernicke area, which helps us understand speech and language and perceive it. There's a different area called as a visual cortex, which helps us see things and so on. Now, when people like us, AI engineers, when we build algorithms that can explain to a system, whether this is a male or a female, whether this is a flower or this is a bird and so on, we try to replicate that visual cortex in a computer. And that's how you get these artificial intelligence solutions which can understand images and scenes and so on. Similarly, when you speak into a system like a Siri and so on, then it understands your voice and it does things on top of it. How does it understand a human's voice is again influenced by the way that Wernicke area in our brain actually works and you replicate that. So the first step, we are learning how our brain actually works and neuroscientists are the ones who are actually helping us identify that. There are other things now. What is right, what is wrong and so on is also coming in in the space of what is called as ethics in AI. So you would have a lot about bias in AI, transparency in AI, fairness in AI, ethics in AI. Now, who knows the most about ethics in our society? These are legal rules. So you go back to learning how legal systems are defined and understand those, bring them back into AI systems and then build AI systems that are fair and uh, transparent and so on. Now, what is right and what is wrong? Take an example of a self-driving car. A self-driving car is driving on the road. There's a seven-year-old child on one side. It's a hypothetical situation, but there's a seven-year-old child on one side. There's a 70-year-old person on the other side. And this car only has two choices. It'll have to um, hit one of those. Which one should it hit? If I were driving, I wouldn't think about those things, whatever comes in my instincts, that's how we go. But if I'm sitting in this room comfortably, building an AI algorithm that has to make that decision, I have a good option of thinking nicely and easily and understanding 
what is it that the society needs and what is the right thing to do and that's how i code it into that algorithm which means our own ethics are getting redefined because now we have to code it into an ai algorithm now let me ask you again what do you think is the right answer here so now um, let me give some uh, perspectives on the answer in some societies it is believed that maybe we should save the 7 year old child because that child is the future of the society and maybe will be able to deliver more to the society on the other hand there are some um, civilizations which would say that this 70 year old person actually has a lot of knowledge and information and if uh, that person is not there then we will lose out on that insight so maybe it's better to preserve that i don't want it to get into the debate of it but these things have started to be discussed because now we are trying to see what is right and based on that let me now code it in my ai algorithm so people in neuroscience are involved because they are getting into our heads and trying to understand how the brain works people in the legal teams are getting involved to try and see what is right and wrong and they themselves are questioning what from their own perspective which we had, they had not thought earlier obviously people in computer science people who write technology who write a piece of code and so on they are definitely involved in this people in software testing domain or people who write the piece of software they are redefining the way how ai algorithms can be written and can be tested because ai is not an exact science when you multiply 17 by 24 all of you will agree that the answer is 408 but when you look at an image and you say or let's say if you look at my face and you are supposed to guess my emotion whether i am happy or sad or excited or um whatever some of you will have one perception the other of you will have some other perception now if an ai algorithm is giving an output that this person is happy or sad and therefore maybe play some other song how do you test that because the answer could be different it's not always the same 17 multiplied by 24 in the ai world is not the same i mean the equivalence of 17 by 24 so the whole area of software engineering the whole area of testing ai solutions and so on is revamping itself because of this technology so no matter where you go from people who are involved in building these ai systems the variety is significantly larger than what you would have seen of any other piece of technology and what happens when a piece of technology is multidisciplinary which means you are getting inputs from the best of the psychologists best of the legal teams best of the neuroscientists best of the computer scientists best of the coders magic is going to get created definitely in the future because i mean when something is really fascinating that's when you need people from very different domains and it is very broad now let's take 2 3 minutes to talk about what ai is going to do what kind of solutions is it going to build and that same story continues that the breadth is significantly large there so if you look at ai solutions that we talked about the alexas and the series of the world or anything that you do on e-commerce those things are using ai education people are using ai to figure out what is it that i should learn after this step and then the next step and the learning curriculum for every student is very different so how do i get a sense of what the student is able to learn did the student put more attention on this paragraph or some other paragraph when i'm looking on the screen am i spending more time on the question or more time on the answers by looking at i guess technology and so on all of those places are using ai when you go to banks and that's where mastercard into comes into picture in finance domain how do you identify who is a good person to provide a loan to to give a mortgage who is a safe person how do you identify whether this transaction is a fraudulent transaction or this transaction might be used for terrorist activities and so on just from a transaction right because you have large amounts of data of this these people doing transactions you can figure those things out so a lot of use cases in banking healthcare look at ct scans look at 
people's profiles in terms of how their health has been and therefore provide diagnosis and so on, trying to even predict uh, what are the most effective drugs for a particular um, um, disease and so on. Massive use of um, AI is going to, is there. In retail, so when I'm trying to go to stores which are not human bound, can I identify automatically that these particular things, people are more interested in these things, people are less interested in how I organize my bookshelf and so on and so forth, everywhere AI is being used. You talk about um, heavy machinery, place things which do rigging of oil and so on, right? So they are very expensive things. Where do you dig the hole so that you get an oil from there? And that's also in some sense a prediction technology, you have large amounts of data and then you're trying to predict what is the most valuable place from there where you can get um, oil. So these are very, very important areas where AI being used. And then there are these areas which you and I get to see in terms of the series and Alexas of the world and so on. So it is very deep because businesses are dependent on them. And at times it is also very shallow and easy because you and I can access them and feel them without even knowing that this is AI. So the depth and the breadth is actually broad in AI. Now, if I were you at this age in teens, which I dream of, I'm too old now, but if I were you and that that age and if something fascinating is going to happen, I would really think where should I invest myself in so that I'm ready for that future, which would be completely AI driven. Now, no matter what your interests are, if you are interested in more humanities kind of things, psychology side of things, think how the psychology of humans are going to change because of AI, and also think how AI should change because of the human psychology. If you are in marketing, if you are interested in having a marketing career, that will also change and depend on how you um, sell these kind of things. If you're a computer scientist, if you're a biologist and so on, it's always good to figure out what you want to be and then see how this huge wave of AI will affect that domain and be ready for that. And that will give you an early advantage. And if you have an early advantage in anything, it's very, very hard to beat that no matter how difficult the competition is. So I'm very excited that for your future that you are facing an area of technology which is about to come. If you are ready, you are going to ride the wave. So all the best and I'm sure you are going to learn a lot in the next two weeks. Um, enjoy this time and um, just continue on this journey. Just think of this as just start in AI. Thank you. Fantastic, that was brilliant, Itendra. Uh, so before you leave, just uh, what advice would you offer to the young people? Maybe uh, top three uh, tips uh, to all those who are just beginning their journey of exploration into AI for impact. Um, top three tips from you. Yeah, I think the most important is to get to the right source of understanding AI. When a technology becomes very popular, there are just too many things um, that you see and hear around those. A lot of it, unfortunately, is nice. Many people don't know what it is, but they still talk about it. It's not good to learn from them. So identify the source from which you are learning very, very importantly, because it's important to choose that in a lot of noise here. The second thing is that AI is not just a technology for computer science or for IT and so on. It is affecting all different domains. No, I don't want to be a computer scientist, so let's me ignore AI. No, that's not the right thing to do at this point in time. It is very, very, very broad. So pick one or the other thread of it, at least to know from that perspective. And the third thing is that we should also understand that it's important to have something like a T-shaped um, career going forward. You have some breadth, but you go deep into one particular area. If you know everything at a very shallow level, that does not make a good um, career in AI. So choose one area, maybe you're interested only in bias and fairness. So go deep into that, but be shallow in the other things also. Because just going into bias and fairness without looking at everything else will make your perspective a bit narrow. So yeah, that's those are the three things I could think of, Ali, now. Thank you, Itendra. Uh, 
Fantastic. Uh, brilliant. Well, on this note, uh, Nitendra, if you have to go, uh, do go, but you're welcome to stay on this call.